Professor James Oleke Yapi. Soba. Eva. Ole Kiapi. Yes. James Ole Kiapi. Karibu sana, uh, Thank Prof. You. And um, <laughs> just before, you know, you, you walked in as uh, your senator was leaving the studio, mm. the senator for Narok uh, uh, County. And I can see you've also tweeted about him. And you said uh, Ledema Olekina is being criticized for not being politically correct at uh, the show. But in fact, he's provided deep insights of sentiments at the core of tribalism in Kenya. True national cohesion must be based on deeply ingrained culture of inclusivity and integration programs. <coughs> Prof. Yes, all I meant <laughs> is very in very simple terms is that he, he was speaking the language that you would actually hear among the locals if you went deep into uh, Narrow County. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of village talk that, you know, we are being finished and everybody is taking away our land and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's very simplistic, but if you peel it layer by layer, you, you'll find out that um, over time it creates tension, you know, of Kenyans against Kenyans. Mm. Because when you talk about integration, when you talk about inclusivity, K Kenyans look at it from various dimensions. It's not only land. It's not only where I can live or not live. For example, I have a house in Wasingishu County. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody has ever told me, you're Maasai, you shouldn't have a home here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And I have a home in my own county, in, in, in Narrow County. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's my home. Mm. So, and there are a lot of people uh, from all over the country who are in Kajado, uh, who are in Samburu, and who are in Narok. And I think we, we must have what we call a justice that goes across the board. Mm. So that if you talk about, you know, appointments in, in the national government, in the public service, across the board, we must see that um, inclusion cutting across. Now there's representative representation there, there is, across the country. There is representation across the country. Mm. One time I did a very simple mathematics and I said, um, if, you, if you really, really want to demonstrate uh, you know, inclusivity mm. and, and that representation. If you decide, for example, I have 22 um, cabinet secretaries and you say, even if you go on the principle of equity, equity mm. meaning that those who are more take a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So if you said, L let me share this and, and then let the following 22 communities of Kenya Take the take slots. The mm -hmm. Then there is another layer of position you're going to give called principal secretaries. You would want to reach again out to more and more. Why? Because if we deny that we are not ethnic, then we are lying. But if we accept that we are first coming from smaller nations called ethnic communities, mm -hmm. then you must bring them together by first of all demonstrating that principle of equity and with time the more you do that the more it reaches a point when it doesn't matter anymore who becomes president because kenya across the board will see it as it doesn't matter whoever goes there will always treat all of us equal. E equitably mm. not even equal equally mm. equitably, equitably. Right. So, so I think for me that was the first principle I was saying that a lot of people sometimes like talking and, and appearing like um, I, I don't want to be... We are running away from this truth. Okay, <laughs> yes. And, and, and so I, that is what I meant by political correctness. Mm. But I was saying go deeper. Take those sentiments and use them to, to elaborate a sensitive... Um, national policies, mm. including county. I mean, for example, one of the points, of course, I would also challenge Le Le Lekina to do mm. as a senator, which is part of the leadership of the county, mm. they should actually enforce regulations, they should enforce land use policies, mm. and therefore 
uh, a lot of the things that are said in the rallies don't need to be said in the rallies because you it is your role it's to do it. It's the job them. of leaders. You can already sure do that. You, you already have the power to do it. Mm. And, so, and so it is really a balancing act. All right. Yeah. Mm. Prof, you vied for presidency <coughs> in 2013. Mm -hmm. And just before that, you were principal secretary. Um, uh, P.S. That time it was permanent secretary for uh, education, yeah, and it was substantively permanent secretary. It was proper <laughs> permanent, and, 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 and it was powerful. I mean, I'll explain to you a bit, All right? Yes. And then now you went. You decided to what you wanted to uh, get your hell, yourself into politics. Uh -huh. This was your first venture into politics, was it? No, national politics at that level. Yes, I right. mean it, that that was my first run into the presidential campaign. Mm. But I actually wanted to run for Member of Parliament. And my own Member of Parliament, Mr. Congela, was very crafty. Yeah. He went to talk to Mr. Mudaura. Mm -hmm. I came to know this later. Somebody told me the story. <laughs> <laughs> and said, this character called Professor Lekiapi is going to take this seat from me. Right. And he won't accept, you know, something small talking. Yes. You, we must give him something that even the community at home Mm. will not allow him to say no to. Wow. And so, from nowhere, and uh, I used to, I had a very simple campaign approach in the, in the district, mm. in the constituency. Mm. I would go to the publishers and get like, like Jomo Kenyatta publisher, KLB. Mm. Education was my platform. Yeah. And I was going there and I would go and buy a wholesale price from the publishers. And go and hold what I was calling book harambe. So I would call um, parents, to, to everyone to just contribute one book. Then I would bring my two cartons of books and then we would put them all on a large table. Mm -hmm. And if you go to a secondary school that has never seen some of those textbooks, you can just see visible smiles and mm. passion and joy. So that was your strategy. That was my strategy. Mm -hmm. So And I was doing it so well and it was having gravitas. Mm. <laughs> so on this particular day, I'd come from Jomo Kenyatta Foundation. And I was I was actually around this place on Mombasa Highway, uh -huh. uh, on Mombasa Road, going to plan for the weekend trip home, mm. so that I go and do my thing. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, <laughs> my phone was jammed. I've been appointed permanent secretary. Bus. And the whole story changed. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were I, I, I didn't, immediately there were sort of conflicting voices within me. Mm -hmm. Do I take it or do I not? And the reason was that there, were, there was a local guy. I remember a debate <laughs> with some young people. <laughs> <laughs> and one person asked me, Kiapi, if you are given a job like a director or permanent secretary, will you abandon us? Uh, so yeah. I was in a dilemma. If <laughs> I say yes, I had very firmly confirmed to that young man that, you that would, they would never them. abandon them. Under no circumstance would I take any other thing. But now here I am. I'm given a, a very good position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm appointed by the president. Do I say no? Or do I take you know, the job? And damn the consequences on the ground. It's a bigger platform for you. But my uncle did a very wise thing. Uh -huh. He called about a thousand people to my home. In Osupuko village in, in Transmara. And one weekend. By the way I didn't go, week, the, I didn't go home the first, the second. I almost like took three weeks. <laughs> because I, was, I didn't know what conflicted. I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Finally when I went home. My uncle actually stood. And he spoke very well. He said. This is the fellow you've been telling us, you know, where, where is your, you know, where, where is that son of yours that mm. you, you, everybody you're telling us about? Now I'm a Patua Kasi. So what, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So he's, he said, here he is. Now tell him what you want. Tell him if you want him to take the job, tell him to take the job. If you want him to leave the, uh, the, the presidential appointment and come here and run so that you give him the seat, do that. Of course, they debated, debated. <laughs> but finally, they said, no, we have never had a job like this, you know. And, and then they just said, take it. So I took it. 
of course, I don't know that everybody vindicated me. I mean, <laughs> I think some held, <laughs> you know, unjustified grudges, but mm. that's how life is. So if they had said otherwise, <laughs> if they had said, don't take the job and come and represent us on this seat, would you I have would, done that? I would that? have done that. Mm. I would have done that. Mm. Because I was conflicted myself. Mm. I even went to church and I was praying and I said, Lord, sort this out. And actually when I went home, it was very clear. Very clear. That they supported you. Now, later on, um, <laughs> fast forward, uh, now, this friend of mine told take me Take a short that break, uh, <laughs> Prof. Let's, let's take a look at traffic and then we come and uh, continue this conversation. It's a very interesting tale of how you got into, into politics. And I think it's very important that we start from those foundations, uh, from somebody who's working in the education sector, who's working a lot with the community, who has his eyes set uh, on the parliamentary seat. And then you're saying um, some of those who are also playing politics at that point play higher level politics and you find yourself getting appointed into a very na a big national seat. This yeah. is the principal secretary, a permanent secretary for education. <laughs> uh, let's uh, take a short break and then Professor K.F. will tell us what happened next and how did he end up on the presidential ballot in 2013. Good morning. So, Prof, you were telling us about your entry into, into <coughs> politics. You were being played at some point. Yes, mm. and, and, and I think the goal was to bring this guy in let him come and then after election we just throw him out <laughs> so i was appointed actually on the 20th of december mm -hmm. 2006 i went to uh, i was first ps of, envir of, of environment of environment yes and then i and 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 i was the only ps who about six years i moved to every two years i moved to a new ministry i started with environment and then i went to medical services yeah. and environment i worked under three ministers very difficult people <laughs> but very good people. Uh -huh. very good people uh -huh. uh, kivuda kibwana was very nice gentle and and then the late miraria mm -hmm. and then michuki closed it up and uh, you know michuki he, he was a <laughs> he was a mover right mm. and then i went to medical i was with anyang mm -hmm. and then finally i went to education with ongeri yes mm. so the the, the the trap was let's get him in and then we can just get him out yeah keep him busy 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 but i wouldn't let them get me out mm -hmm. because when i got in mm. i had committed to myself that wherever i go in government because i had i was always yearning to go and make a difference in mm. Mm -hmm. in, in policy making and and just because we were complaining as academics uh, like i was mm -hmm. in academia all along mm -hmm. why are these things being not being done and so forth and so on but now i had my chance so i said if i would be in a ministry for a month or two months or or, or or a year you'll give it your best i would give it my best and it, it, i wouldn't give a damn what anyone would do in terms of like threats or what mm. I, I i didn't really care about that mm. i just wanted to do the best i could to the republic yeah and therefore i performed and we had a very nice head of civil service mudaura a very experienced man who understood both politics and and the and running, running of, of public service <laughs> and he understood also the meaning of diversity mm -hmm. Ah, so in the end, he said, ah, this guy is great. He's going nowhere. Until fin finally, I, I took out myself in 2012 running for president. Mm -hmm. Now, why did I run for president? There were two major reasons. Uh, number one, mm. the 2007-2008 post-election violence. That, viol that uh, violence, I saw it myself. I observed it myself. And... A bunch of us were really a bit angry. Mm. We were yeah. angry because we were the one managing the mess in the ministries. Staff in the ministries, there was tension among the various staff coming from different communities of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And you are now this daddy and, and mommy to try and bring these tensions down. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. But two... What, we, what I saw happening actually on, you know, in that part of Western Kenya it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to describe it because you know it. Until one day, somebody actually said, you know, somebody, an, uh, another lady, a good lady said, mm. and there, 
any other men in this nation hmm. that you or women that that you have to allow two people or a bunch of fellows to take the country round and round so a lot of us started into conversation even peers friends of mine mm -hmm. we were meeting i wasn't alone it was a group of people but with the time many of them disappeared one by one mm -hmm. one by one you know we started as a team and we said why don't we make a difference why don't we bring a, a, a new narrative, a, a different agenda, a different alternative? <laughs> and then secondly, the PNU and the ODM ministers, you know, after they met the country fight, as soon as the agreement was signed, one day I had a moment, I will not describe where it happened. Mm. When I see these people doing high fives and laughing. They're the as, best of buddies. As if... All this was just a, a game. A game. Yeah. It was just a joke. <laughs> and meanwhile, there was so much animosity out there amongst the people. Amongst the people. Yeah. And I looked at it, I was a peers. You know, when you are a peers, you observe ministers. <laughs> <laughs> and you observe this silliness of adults behaving as if it was just a game of us versus you. Hmm. It was like a football match. It was like a football match. So you were coming to disrupt this and then, very well-organized football nonsense. match. No, th th this was a Premier League. No, <laughs> <laughs> and then, a number of times, again, I will not mention him, mm. I was right there between my job and telling a minister, no, sir, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. It is not allowed. I, you, you want me to sign this for you. And I know very well that it, it is, is wrong. It is wrong. And then they say, ah, I mean, th these are the guys that Kenyans call Mushmua outside. Hmm. These are the same characters that, that they, 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 they trust to change the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I say, we are waiting, we are taken for a long mm -hmm. ride. D and, despite and, we, mm -hmm. and we are waiting for a long time. Right. Um, <laughs> so I, so for me, I got what, what, I, what I would call like moral courage. I mm. got a, mm. I just got a boldness that, you know what, I might not even win. But, you know, sitting and watching this, mm. It's not acceptable. Mm. So was it enough for you to then put your name on that ballot? With, well, the, with the frustration that you clearly felt, was it enough? It was more than enough, not just because it, it also happened that a lot of the things that I was doing as a peers, I would ditch a sailing. Mm. Like I would push everything that I would and, and then, and the, then the, 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 the matter now needs to go to the next level. Prof. Omefika Musho. This is it. This is <laughs> That's it. This is something you have done for the last like half a year. <laughs> and then suddenly, wachana <laughs> naio. And, and, and you don't know where it's coming from. Then I said, ah, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the, let, let us go to the field. Let me go at least and make, let me go and tell Kenyans what's happening. And I actually told Kenyans, unfortunately, they were not listening. Hmm. So did what, tell us what did you say? I, I when remember. did you say this? <laughs> when did you and tell us? In fact, I remember <laughs> when Jubilee Alliance, it was Jubilee Alliance and ODM. Yeah. I remember one day, severally telling people on national TV. Mm. But you see, the media, when we speak to cameras in the field, Whatever finally comes out of TV, it is like a, a, a few seconds of a minute of very good um, sound bites. Sound bites. Mm. I said, the difference, you people, you're fighting over these two groups. Mm -hmm. The difference between this one and that one is the same. There was no difference. <laughs> and there's still no difference. It is a matter of combination and permutation. Who is on this side this time and who is on that side next ne next time? Mm. It is the same. It has always been like same that. Same monkeys for it's, the same It's a forest. conspiracy uh, against the people. And uh, unfortunately, the people are unable to see on their own. Mm. Yes. So did you feel that you were the ones, you were the one then who was going to help Kenyans see? I felt that I, c I could make the difference. Mm. I felt that I needed, uh, it wasn't, to be al me alone, mm -hmm. it wasn't to be a bunch of us of like mind. And has that changed? Be you wanted to be the hummingbird. Mm. 
It, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Well, not a bit. Mm. With, with not a bit. Mm. With, with hindsight, uh, mm. Mwishimiwa, mm. Uh, do you feel, do you now understand what you could have done differently to actually perhaps do better in this competition that you had thrown yourself into? No, I didn't do, um, I, I didn't perform as I did because um, I didn't know the enormity of the issue. Mm. It was that under the circumstances then, we gave our very best. But the political um, arena in Kenya is very different. It is framed in a way that the people have no chance of winning. Where the people you mean? The ordinary Mwanaindi has no chance of winning in the sense of we are electing the, the, the four of us here. We have promised the people we are going to do one, two, three, four. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that now they have given us that chance. We do one, two, three, four. They don't have a chance. Never ever. Meaning our votes mean nothing. Yes. Even now, of they, course. They, do, they uh, just do what they want to do. Mm. I mean, t tell me, ex give me an example of, of when they have done what the people, when they have told the people they will do. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to name, name and give examples, but you know what I'm talking so about. So are you saying the same? But but so, so <laughs> the political uh, class. No, let me tell you, the politi the, ne the, country, the country called Kenya is hijacked by the political class. Mm. Everything they do is a framing to just give them another power grab. But who is power this? Grab. Who is this then who controls this political the politi class? Because the you can't tell me the that political all class, these people The political think class, the same way. by the way, can I tell you the political class, who mm -hmm. they are? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you take a, a pyramid, a, you know, like a, a triangle, mm -hmm. uh, at the top there, mm. you have the politicians who elect. Yes. Some of them very innocently. Yes. There was a time we felt that they were, most of them were not well educated and that therefore if we sent more educated people, things, <laughs> things would be better. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can tell you if you look at parliament today, there's more educated young people with, with degrees and, and all of that, mm. but, but things end better at all. <laughs> so there is a very small group there mm -hmm. of, of the political elite, meaning that the, the, those that we elect, they are sponsors, mm -hmm. which, which is the, 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 the rich cartels that are behind, that you never know who the they are. The shadowy figures. And, and, they, and they never run for anything. <laughs> the shadowy figure, they are just there. Right. Their job is just to make sure we have favorable people at the top. And then you have the so-called professionals, because the professional class, us, mm -hmm. we are also a letdown to the nation. Mm. Because what happens is that we participate Wittingly or unwittingly, we participate in this game of chickenery, lying to the nation. Because we are the same, we become the beneficiary of, of, of the appointments, and we just become part of the cartel system. And so the middle class is unable to move and become the, con the social consciousness mm. of the country. So what you're saying is that, in essence, the political class is a gang. And it's a gang for which we become, for which we've become part of. Okay. okay. So we are a part of this gang. We are part of that gang. But we, so we, are, because we don't know can, can who's I tell controlling you why? the gang. Can I tell you why? Look all over the world, east, west, south. There's no country that has ever changed hmm. when the middle class remains indifferent. Right. Hmm. When the middle class, and by middle class I mean professionals, mm -hmm. yeah. professors, lawyers, doctors. The, pal the people who think politics is dirty, yeah. as long as they remain at the back and they are watching the dance, you know there's dancing, there's <laughs> reggae, <laughs> as long as they stay there and they watch the dance, then we want to keep our hands clean. Let's take a short break, Prof. And then when you come out of the short break, you'll tell us who is this, the shadowy figures who run these politicians. The cartels. The cartels. Who are they and how can we identify them? They are people who are nameless. They have no name. But you know that they exist because they're the ones who, who take uh, government contracts at inflated prices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had a chance, so I know who they are. I had a chance to, when I was appointed a PS for 
health. Mm. When I went there, a lot of my friends were concerned that how are you going to deal with mafia? Because we, it was called mafia house instead of afia house. It was <laughs> called <laughs> mafia house. Mm -hmm. With good so, reason. With good, good reason. You know, the Ministry of Health for the Republic of Kenya is perceived to be a mafia house. Mm. So people told me, what are you going to do? And you know, they size you, they check who you are. And at that time, I said the PSS were powerful because we, we were the accounting officers, meaning we are responsible for every cent and shilling. Mm -hmm. And we were the authorized officers, meaning that we were responsible for all staff. You ran the show. We ran the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The minister was the political head. Mm -hmm. But I, I, could, I could as well tell the minister, no, you are not going for that trip. It's not <laughs> useful. It's not useful to the government of mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing they will do without my signature. It's no one, happening. no one, no one will do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this CSS business has compl completely changed everything. Mm -hmm. The CSS are now the CEOs. Right. So let no one, let none of them ever tell you that I didn't know what was happening in the ministry. They knew. Oh, they knew. They, they, knew. Knew. As they, they were right at the center of it. Mm. Ah, how can a CEO say that I don't know? Mm. How can a CEO say I, I didn't know what how, was how, going how on. five billion disappeared? And their signatures mm. are required. And, and they are the ones who direct and say give this one to this one and mm -hmm. do this one. And mm -hmm. do. So it's a moral issue. You, you decide as a human being, as a Kenyan, and say, I'm not going to take part in this. And so I, we have too many. What, what we're looking at now, if you look at the whole, is that we have too many people one not day, making that decision. One day, can I tell you, mm. I stood in Afia House because a bunch of young men who are my friends just came to me with slick suits. And I saw them carrying briefcases. And they were coming to tell me that same nonsense. And the whole day I was hearing my, it's that one and the same thing, cartels and cartels. And I stood from my chair and I looked through the window and I looked downtown. Mm -hmm. And I said, you mean this whole business is just about deals? Mm -hmm. I mean, what we are calling governance is, is deals? deals. I said, damn it, this is not right. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan people deserve so much more. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why I'm telling Kenyans now, those who are listening to me, that we have got to really interrogate those who become our leaders at MCA, at member of parliament, at senator level, all the way to the president. Are those the only ones who need to be in interrogated? Because you just said now that everybody is playing a part. The middle class is playing a part in this sham, as you called it. Are they the only ones who well, need to, to, to interrogate? I hold the ones in the office responsible because as a PS, I would say no. And there's nobody who would go. They can only fire me. Mm. Mm. They could only fire me. There was nothing else anybody take a could stance. do to me. If I say no, I will not sign this. I mean, I, I was taken to Mombasa. You know what happened? An assistant minister um, in Mombasa calls me and says, there's a guy I should meet in Mombasa. And I meet the guy and I don't know who the guy is. And the guy comes and says, you see, you know, there's a file in the ministry. I want you to go and pass and it is worth 125 million and that, you know, 10% is yours. And then I started imagining what 12 million will do for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I went back and, and I, I went back. Uh, I went back and I million. said, and I said, I'm not signing it. I refuse. I made the decision. Mm -hmm. I even refused to release a certain payment. And as soon as I was, as I, as I was removed to education, the guy who it came was, after me it was came released. and released the payment. I mean, come on. What are we talking about? So it doesn't in matter. In fact, I mean, my greatest regret is that I worked so hard in the public service and a lot of the things I did were just... That's what I'm saying. But, but, so why do you, but, but why is there regret, uh, Professor? Be because it's a regret that you've worked so hard in vain. No. Why do you say it is in vain? Because everything I did was undone. Yes, but, but the, in, with, in, what, in, with what, sense, with what in, consequences? No, listen, in, in, in a sense, you feel it's like, it's like you sweat all your life and then you discover what you build. The others just came and pulled it down. And, and, and you feel a sense of letdown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, you. for your own self, you, f you feel vindicated. You feel mm. that I, I did my very best mm. and I made a difference. And then 
if they uh, because there is a god in heaven let the let, let let at least there's a record that i did my best right, right. i believe that god does exist in heaven because when you went to the he ministry of, of education <laughs> there was a very big issue in the ministry yes and you were being blamed for it and yet yes everything had taken place before you actually got there. thank you what was isn't there a god in heaven <laughs> now it, no i like this guy yeah because we like him <laughs> that era that era was perpetuated mm. and all i had and and i i ended up defending what i didn't need to defend take us back to that what I, what exactly was happening at the ministry of education when you went there you see, as I, I was telling you, I was always moved without no justification. Mm -hmm. My real background in terms of academic qualification is environmental issue. Put me there, I'm a fish in water. Mm. And, and when I was taking environment, it is considered in Kenya, unfortunately. It, it's supposed to be a big ministry. Yeah. It's supposed to be at the center of, of our sustainability yep. and, and sustainable development. But we think... It's a small ministry. It, it is a small it's ministry. It's a token ministry. <laughs> it's a token <laughs> ministry. <laughs> if you are taken there, it's kind of a, de a demotion. Mm. <laughs> so when I went there, me, I said, I'm happy here because I can make it big. Mm -hmm. And I started moving. And Donna started coming. I remember uh, a Rockefeller uh, group coming to my office. And after we talked about climate change, they told me, they, they, they talked to New York and they said, we want this guy to be, to, to implement this, we will give you money. Mm -hmm. And then one week later, I was moved. You're moved. <laughs> and then <laughs> Had the, the money arrived. The guys in the ministry <laughs> tried to follow up and they said, ah, the PS we believed in has gone. So we are not giving you money. End oh. of the story. Uh -huh. Because so, donors want credibility. Yeah. If they think you can deliver mm -hmm. and you're not going to... It is their task, task, what we call taxpayers' money. We don't value our, our tax own taxpayers' in this money. Country. <laughs> the attitude in Kenya is that public is for free. Yes. When you, you, you were explaining what happened to the education. education. No, uh, um, um, to, yes. yeah. so I was moved. I was just telling. I was. I kept getting moved. Mm -hmm. So when I was moved to education, I actually found there was an investigation going on. So what I did, I told all the senior official, please give all the documentation. I don't want to interfere with this thing because I don't even know what is being investigated. Mm -hmm. Let them do they their working. job. Mm -hmm. It was an accounting issue. Let them do it. I have never met that team. <laughs> they never came to me even for a courtesy call to mm -hmm. say, sorry, when, when, Mr. B, when Mr. Pierce, we, we, we need the, your people to cooperate in A, B, C, D. Yep. So that I can whip everybody into yes, line. Mm. Yes. So suddenly a report comes and then I think it, it went to the PS, uh, was it Treasury? Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the then finance uh, uh, min minister, who is now the president, uh, announced and said that eight, mil eight billion is missing in the ministry, in the ministry of education. Oh, wow. yep. okay. And hell broke, broke loose. Mm -hmm. My friend Karega, who was there, had already been conveniently moved to local government. Mm -hmm. So now the fire came to me. Yep. And then uh, it didn't <laughs> help that Lumumba, PLO, my friend, Lububa went on national TV and said the minister and the peers must take political responsibility. I can't call him and say, PLO, how can you do that? <laughs> Please meet me tomorrow in the ministry. Let us address the media. I want you to tell them this one was not, this is not the peers I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he never did. So I, I was in the firing line alone. Mm. If the people called for your resignation, what, what, they what for helped your me? What helped me was the nation. Mm -hmm. The nation actually helped me, and and Nat, mm. Nat said, "Wachana na Kiapi. Kiapi knows nothing about this, because it turns out it was a it was a query on money that was spent in two thousand and seven. 2008. Mm -hmm. During that time, there. I was meandering in between uh, environment <laughs> and health. <Okay. laughs> I, I didn't even know you I would come no to clue. education. You never end up in education. That's how it went. <laughs> and, and and actually I almost I almost got because I was called I was called at the highest level you know by the ambassador without I said you know uh, if things go bad yeah, um, if, this, if this becomes too we hot ha we have to take action we have to take I said but you know when I went there 
<laughs> you know, uh, uh, fortunately, right. it turned out the issue really was there was a voucher that released money to primary schools. Mm -hmm. And that voucher, the original was missing. But the, 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 the copy was the one that the auditors saw. Mm. And they queried, where is the original voucher? And as long as you don't explain everything, they will say this money is Something unaccounted. Is yes. But so what eventually we did, uh, I told them to call the banks that they send the money to. Mm. And the banks gave statements of all the schools showing that they indeed received the money. And the money indeed went to schools. That's how we were saved. Wow. Professor James Olekiapi is in the studio. He's telling us about his, uh, you know, stint in the public service and what made him decide he'd like to move into politics. Look, I've got to take uh, a stab at the presidency because I think the way the politics of this country is being run is wrong and I want to change it. And I want to tell the people what's happening and what's wrong. Um, how many votes did you end up getting in uh, 2013? <coughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do you know why? Right, yes. I know, of because course there's a reason. No, I'll tell you why. Yes. The reason was that actually we didn't have much of resources. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. Right. I mean, even though I made a, an appeal to Kenyans and say, make, make your contribution, this is all about you. Don't see it in terms of about kiaping. Mm. Mm. But that is new to Kenyans. Man, the mentality in Kenya is that if you are Mushmua, you are the money. one who gives us. If, if you, you give, give us, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And, and so we didn't have enough resources mm. in terms of deploying uh, what, what you call agents mm. to mm. count for you. Mm. So what we have is official um, IEBC data. Mm -hmm. And IEBC data for all intents and purposes, my votes could have been used to fill other people's votes. So, <laughs> uh, in fact, a young man called me again. I will not make mention the mm. county and say, "Sir, your votes are being counted in favor of so and so, and there is nothing we can do." So, I, I and I said, "Okay, let them do whatever they want." Right. Mm. So, so, I think for me, we really, really need a culture of honesty. Mm -hmm. mm. All this business about BPI and uh, the rest of it is a nation that that has allowed dishonesty to take root because honesty is about what you do when no one else is seeing what you are doing mm -hmm. it's like you are in the office and that's actually my definition of integrity what you do when no one is watching you these are things though the, the in terms of what then needs to happen for there to be a turnaround in this country now, these now, are things that are not tangible you can say there's a plan there's a policy follow what can we do but to get what, to that what, point? What, what we can do, hmm. what, we, what we can do is, my appeal now goes to the professional class. Mm -hmm. We do have what we call a critical mass hmm. of well uh, aware and uh, well educated and Kenyans, because leadership has to be provided. The masses need leadership. Even at the grassroots, whether you're talking about the village, many of us have come from villages. Mm. Whether we went to universities within or outside, we come from somewhere. If, if we can have a critical mass of us supporting an idea because it is novel, it is novel, rather than, uh, rather than because of what I can get from it, mm. it is love for country. And, and it has to come from a critical mass of people saying this is enough enough is enough we're gonna change things You're and, and then just you rally around and you know you don't have a perfect candidate all the time mm. sometimes you may have to rally for one who is less than perfect but but represents those transformational ideas that we feel can take the country a little further and then it is those incremental changes if if, if implemented that can bring overall change over time. But as long as you're going in a circuitous uh, manner, mm -hmm. you take two steps forward and, and then three backwards, you remain at the same spot and effectively you're going back because poverty levels in this country are not declining. They're still deeply right there. And a lot of social economic issues need to be addressed. And you cannot address them by being peripheral and, and, and dealing with them at the service. You need to dig deep. Government, too, needs to really put the best foot 
forward. Mm. Kenya has the best. You can get them in Europe. You can get them in America, wherever they are. Call them if those that are inside are not good enough. Call those Kenyans wherever they are. Bring them in their diaspora. That sounds very idealistic. It is not. It is so practical. Let me give you. Where are those? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Professionals not participating. Let me give you an example. You know why I like a little bit about what's happening in South Africa. South Africa, you know all this xenophobia thing, notwithstanding. The other day, you have the likes, courageous like young people like Malema, who can say. This anything, and he can say, "Mama, tell us what we need to do. Mm. Yep. Give us a signal." <laughs> where, where are the Malemas of Kenya? Where, where is that? Where are those courageous young people who will say, "We are, you know, advancing an ideal, whatever, whatever it's worth." Mm. In your opinion, what ideal is Malema advocating for, mm. uh, Professor? You no, know, I am. Uh, I am talking about. You, you need disruptors. You need the system to be disrupted. You need people who can bring a different view. Mm. A different, and and a as different I said, if we, ad, if we put different voices in, le, I can tell you if I, when I run again, because I am going to do it, not if, it's when. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I run again, the run will be different from the first one. For the simple reason that Kenyans now know there's a man called Kiapi. Yeah. Wherever I go, they still recognize me. Mm. But when I was coming into the field, there was, of course, the, that underwhelming aspect of who the, guy, who the who heck is, is this guy? guy? But now they know. And, and Kenyans are also beginning to, 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 to go beyond what they hear. And they begin to say, what is in this for us? And I think it, even beyond idealism, let's just come to the practical, practical aspects. Mm. Why don't we just ask, ask very simple question? What is in this for the people? Let me give you an example. Now, the big deal right now is about BBI. And BBI, apart from these other small social issues that we need to address, the main thrust of it is to change the constitution to create more position of prime minister, maybe to a couple, one or two deputies, and, and, and then you have maybe five or six people at the, at top. the top. Let me ask you, what is in that for the people? How will the fact that you have five or six people mm. leading the country at the top executive level change the Directly. governance in the, in the country right now? Mm. How? Many questions to ask us. So, so, so I think for me, that's, I, I, I don't allow myself to, to, to just be, um, to flow with the wind. Because flowing, you know, you know, if you just go with the wind, it's, it's the way to deny who we are and what we can do. Mm. So, Prof, you're saying you will run again for president. I will. Mm. Why not go to, to the MP like you wanted to initially? I can also run for that. There's no problem. It, it, for me, it is not a matter of high position. Mm. It's, a, it's a matter of giving service to the, to people, the people of Kenya. The reason I wanted to run for president, the reason I wanted to run for president was not merely because I was looking for a job to be an MP or a governor. You were looking to I, make a change. I, I already, already had a big job as a permanent secretary. Oh. Yep. I was looking into a place where I can have the greatest impact for the entire country. And mm. must you be in an electable position to be able to do this? No, that's why I'm in mean, a professor right now. You know, you're not even asking me where I've been. I, I, I go, went back to teach, mm -hmm. and I'm teaching young people because I have no time to waste waiting for three or four years to run again. Mm. I must keep working. I must keep doing something. Okay. Impacting. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll invite you again to come and uh, let's discuss yeah, more. Yeah, let's talk yeah. more. To expound on this issue. Expound on these issues. Yes. Mm. yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Professor yeah. James Oliki Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. for inviting me. Asante sana for joining us. Thank yeah. you for you know all the words that you've given us. Of course, your experience as well working in public service. Your experience firsthand in dealing with the politics of this country and how the politics shapes up. Of course, uh, it's always important to hear it from the other side. Somebody who's uh, touched it and heard it. Thank you very much also for tuning in. This is The Situation Room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. This conversation continues also on our social media platforms, Spice FM, KE, on Facebook and Twitter.